So part two um, of my series in regards to giving up my liver, part of my liver. So uh, today I'm just going to cover off in regards to how I got to this process because I never would have thought this is an option or you know what to do. So my father had um, had that as the uh, he was tearing over months and months. Uh, I was very busy uh, with my work, like, and I probably didn't give as much attention as I should have. Uh, obviously, from the UK, and we have great trust in the amazing NHS system there. And I just thought, look, you know, they're telling us that it's going to be all right. Uh, my father's going to go uh, and be put on the transplant list. And as soon as he's on that transplant list, he'll get a donor and uh, a new liver, and everything will be hunky dory. So, to my surprise, it wasn't as simple as that. Obviously, we've had the corona pandemic this year. Uh, <coughs> there's been some delays, probably from the consultant, passing things on, and lack of communication, which obviously I've got to take responsibility because I should have been maybe chasing them a lot more than I did. Uh, we finally got an appointment with my father's consultant, which is on 26th of July this year. 2020 on that uh, meeting we are like what's going on you know my father's able to walk seven eight weeks ago and now he's extremely bed bound he's deteriorating he's weighing 50 kilos you know his weight was in excess of 80 kilos you know just six months ago um you know we want some answers and we got a very straightforward answer from the concern where concern and writers look your father has passed the ball for a transplant here in the uk and from that moment, my world changed upside down. Uh, uh, everyone was advising me, look, you've got to accept the reality and look at what it is. But obviously, when you know something's curable, and you know, you know, my father hadn't lived a full life yet. He was 60 at the time, and uh, you know, all he's done is work, he's not had holidays, he's not retired, he's not enjoyed anything yet, you know, and he's been the most amazing human being I've ever known and I just could not accept my father passing the boat and just watching him die. So we looked at every single option that was available to us and uh, after, you know, just a day or so of research and numerous calls and uh, a lot of help and getting in touch with good contacts, I was uh, notified you know, I was informed and found out about live liver donor programs where, you know, as long as uh, a person is a suitable match, uh, they can donate their part of their liver uh, to someone who requires a, the recipient and uh, the, re the recipient who receive a part uh, should hopefully have a uh, liver that will grow back and the uh, donor will take time and in most cases no long lasting, obviously, uh, issues. Uh, and then obviously his liver should grow back as well. So that's where it all started, you know, where we started looking at prices, looking at the father out, all the legal obligations we had to meet, all the hurdles, and uh, you know, it's not an expensive procedure. Uh, the basic package of getting it done for hospital in Turkey was sixty thousand pounds. Uh, $6,000, sorry, and then there's all the options of obviously which hospitals go, where can we go, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, so that's how uh, we came from obviously sitting in the UK waiting for something to happen to actually making uh, a kind of decision or moving forward in regards to looking at alternative kind of uh, options for recovery from a father.